Hey, hey! Welcome back to the Let's Play. Today, my friends, we are going to embark on our fishing journey. That is right. It's about darn time. We got ourselves the angler a couple of episodes or so ago. So let's see what this guy has for a quest. The humble clownfish caught in the ocean. That should actually be relatively straightforward. What we can do in preparation is we can whip out all of these fallen stars that we've gotten so far in this series. We can upgrade the regular worms into enchanted night crawlers, which have a whopping 35% bait power. Unfortunately, we don't have access to a magic conch just yet, but here's what I'm thinking. I am thinking we head on over to the ocean, let's say on the right-hand side here, and we're going to make ourselves our ocean pylon build. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to ocean pylon builds, I feel like we almost always go for some sort of sandcastle related build, and as nice as they are, I want to do something a little bit different. So, we've got sand blocks and we've got silt. We can make ourselves yellow stucco. We can get red stucco with clay blocks. We can even get green stucco. I don't think I've ever made this before. I mean, I don't think I've ever had green thread before either, so... You know, this is all stuff that I want to try to experiment with in this series, my friends. I think the decision for now, though, is between red stucco and yellow stucco. Yellow stucco would make the most sense for the surroundings, but I feel like red stucco could be quite a nice way to go as well. So, we need clay blocks. Do we have clay blocks? Yes, we do, but not a lot. So, I guess we're going to have to go clay mining. I never thought I'd be saying that. <laughs> but again, that's the whole point in this series, my friends. Anything and everything goes. I want to try things that I haven't tried before. So here we are rolling down into the caves with a supply of sticky bombs mining clay. That is right. <laughs> so yeah, fishing, pylon builds, builds in general. If all of that sounds like your cup of tea, then do be sure to head down beneath the video and continue dropping likes on these episodes here. I'd very much appreciate it, my friends. A big thank you to all of you folks who have been dropping likes and showing you support for this series. I really, really do appreciate it a ton, folks. If you're new around here, consider subscribing to the channel, of course, so you don't miss out on my future episodes. We've been releasing episodes pretty much daily since this series has started. So if you're looking for your daily dose of Terraria content, then look no further, my friends. Hit that subscribe button with those bell notifications turned on. If you do want to go on further with your support, though, you can check out my range of gaming PCs over at pythongb.com PC. If you're more on the market for some Terraria merch, though, head on over to terraria.shop and use code Python for a whopping 15% off your order. All right, very good. 500 bits of clay on the dot. In fact, there's a tiny little bit more down there. Haha, <laughs> beautiful. All right, so I think we're looking pretty good. We pop on down to a furnace and there we are. Red stucco. Oh yeah, it's going to look good. We've got 190 blocks of it. Is that going to be enough? I hope so. <laughs> oh yeah. Sandstone slabs and regular stone slabs. Uh, we are definitely going to wind up building with both of these at some point in this series. That's why I love the heavy workbench. You get access to so many more brilliant building resources, don't you? So then, ladies and gentlemen, it's off to the right-hand side ocean. Needless to say, my friends, this is not going to be the only fishing build we do in this series. There are plenty of other biomes where we can get unique fish fish from. For example, in the Crimson, we can get ourselves the Crimson Tiger Fish and the Hemo Piranhas. Both of those are very useful for potions, so that would be quite a nice place to make a fishing build at. Maybe the Underground in general, so we can get Armored Cave Fish. The Eventual Hallow, so we can get Prismite for Life Force Potions. There's just so many different locations in a Terraria world where you can get unique fish, which are useful for potion ingredients. So, yeah, like I say, this is not going to be the only fishing build that we do in this series. And talking of builds in general, yeah, we're going to have fishing builds. We've got pylon builds, maybe a few farm builds, maybe a gem farm, maybe a tree farm. There's just so 
many different building opportunities in a Terraria world. Like, truly there is. You just need to be creative more than anything. Just come up with an idea. Maybe come up with an excuse to build. For example, oh, hey, I want to make myself a farm. And then turn that into a build idea. I think that's a good way to go. I really do. So in this case, it's kind of a double whammy. My excuse to build is the fact that we want to make ourselves a little fishing area. And also a couple of NPC houses so we can have a pile on here. So, yeah. We have the excuse, we just need to come up with some ideas. Hmm, shell piles. Not something I've built with a great deal in the past. Wow, in the evening time, this red stucco looks very pink, doesn't it? <laughs> but you know what? I'm actually kind of in love with it. I actually really kind of like it. Yeah. yeah, I'm definitely down with it, especially for something a little bit different compared to what we would usually use anyway. There we are. We've got a palm wood chair. Very good. I feel like what I might want to do is make like a little bit of a platform going out and then we can have like a little fishing cabin sort of separate from the pylon build. I think that could be a really nice idea. Probably worth picking up some coral here, by the way, because we could use coral to make fishing related potions. All right, here's my idea. We're going to have ourselves a couple basic NPC houses just on the floor and then we're going to have the pylon sort of in the attic. Some accidental good timing news, folks. It's actually nighttime right now so when we get these NPC rooms fully up and running we should be able to get them to spawn in pretty much immediately which is going to be a very very handy dandy all right we've already got some doors so let's place them down looks like we may actually need some more shell piles so I'm gonna have to risk my life down in the ocean again see if I can't find myself some more uh, okay, looks like there's at least a couple more little piles. Okay, excellent. Now to just put a little bit of furniture in these places here. We can have ourselves, I don't know, maybe a candelabra right there. Maybe a little box standard candle right there. And maybe a lantern in the center of each of them. Haha, <laughs> that looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Now if we're nice and quick, we might be able to get ourselves the background walls in, make these valid NPC houses, get the dudes to spawn in, and then we can get on with the fishing quest. And also, of course, more to the point, get ourselves the pylon. And ladies and gentlemen, that should just about do it. So let's have the angler down here. Uh, who else should we have down here? I don't know who actually likes the angler. I may have to wiki this. You know what? There's a better idea here. We could just use the golden combo, can't we? Let's get the nurse and the arms dealer here. And we should pretty much be guaranteed the ocean pylon at that point. All right. So they've just spawned in. Do we or do we not have access to it? Yes, we do. There we are. There's the ocean pylon. The unfortunate thing is I don't have the forest pylon just yet. So... It's weird. Technically, this is the first pylon in our world. That's crazy. See, the thing is, though, now that we do have the pylon and we've already got it placed down, we don't need to worry about NPC happiness anymore. So now the angler can indeed live here. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time. Let's do this thing. We're looking for a clownfish from the ocean. Oh, fourth time lucky. Well, 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 there we have it. We've got apprentice bait and sonar potions. That was our very first fishing quest of the entire series. All right, how's about we get this little base sorted out? What kind of roof do we want to have on this thing? Hmm? I don't really know if I'm honest with you. This is the only issue when you're sort of winging it as you go along. Sometimes you might get stuck and you don't know where to go with your build. Ah, jeez. Actually, do you know what? I think I have a bit of an idea. You know how you can put, like, a goldfish in a bowl and it's just sort of swimming around? Can't you do that with a whole bunch of other sea critters? You can put them in, like, a terrarium and they're all swimming around? What I need to try and determine first is just how many sea critter cages you can even get in the game. All right. Turns out there's actually not that many sea critters you can put in cages. So I've decided to also bundle in the water strider and the frog into that category. The other three actual water critters you can get of course are the seahorse the pupfish and the goldfish so that means a grand total of five terrariums will be going inside of this top build here i do have a little bit of an idea as to what we can do though i'm thinking we make the build rather like this 
and then we could have like a little sort of balcony either side and then we could have ourselves maybe uh, oh for goodness sake are you kidding me bro i'm busy oh no now that there's actual npcs here that means the goblin army is indeed going to be taking us down here ah come on man Ah, oh, jeez, what the hell? <laughs> yo, 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 yo. Oh, this ain't cool at all, dude. Oh, I'm not happy with this. The only upside to this, of course, is the fact that we will get ourselves a goblin tinker at the end of it. Ah, oh, do you know what? Let's just quickly go home and we are going to whip out... Where the devil are they? We need our jester's arrows, if we have any. And then we can do some damage. So let's grab ourselves a bunch more arrows. Let's convert. Let's just go for all of them. Let's just do it. There we are. That should do the job quite nicely. What we could also do with right now is one of these bad boys. Can I place this thing down though? Ah, oh, jeez. I'm not going to have time, am I? I'm not going to have time. There's something in the way. No. Okay, do this. And then uh, TP. Oh, no. Defeat the current threat. <sighs> Terraria, you yourself are the current threat. I was wanting a chill building episode, Terraria. All goes back to what I keep on saying, though, folks. Terraria throws curveballs at you. Darn near constantly, doesn't it? Son of a gun. Well, like I say, there is an upside. We'll have the Goblin Tinker spawning, and then we will be able, believe it or not, we'll be able to already start combining accessories. Ah, this is going well. How's your day going, folks? <laughs> it's got to be said, to be fair, the Jester's Arrows are definitely doing the work. So, you know, I can't complain too much, I guess. Just only the fact that these guys are here when I was trying to have a nice chill building episode. So, um, yeah. Well, my friends, like most things in this game, especially the events, is all about getting into a bit of a flow. And, well, since switching to these here Jester's Arrows, things have actually not been overly bad. I just feel like this event has already lasted an eternity, and I'd very much like for these guys to go away now. <laughs> so... <laughs> Oh, it'll be a matter of time, though, folks. I guess that could be a pretty cool episode end goal, though, folks. Getting the Goblin Tinker and maybe starting to, you know, combine some of our accessories. I think that'd be a really nice thing to do. To be able to do that on only episode six as well. I mean, I don't know about you folks, but that's not bad going, is it? Not really. So... Yeah, I guess in one way, I should thank these guys for deciding to spawn in. The one way being the Goblin Tinker. But aside from that, like I say, these guys can do me the honours of just buggering off for the most part. Hey, and there we are, in fact! <laughs> right, now we need to replace all of our doors because those stupid Goblin Thieves always break them all down. Or is it the peons who do that? I don't know. Anyway, there we are. Everything's restored. Operation Restore is a success. And by the looks of it, all of my NPCs are still okay and all still here, I think. So we should take comfort in that, I guess. We managed to do it without any of our NPCs dying. So that's pretty dang cool. There's not enough villagers near that pylon to access it. What the devil are you on about? We have two NPCs over there. Is it because they're really far away from their base? Am I really going to have to wait for nighttime? At uh, which point those guys will be in their houses and then I could TP to the ocean pylon? Well, talking of nighttime and waiting for NPCs to spawn back in their houses, I figured what might be a good idea while we wait is if we were to create ourselves a clock so here we go i think it's 10 bars that's the wrong thing one two three four five six there we are and there wait what oh yeah i forgot you can make a magic mirror i always thought this was a modded thing but no here we are vanilla terraria we just made a magic mirror do we still have enough bars so there we are, 10 of those. Then we need ourselves, I think, some chains. Then up to a table, and there we are. Another informational accessory. And in just a couple of seconds, we should be able to TP back on over. What? Why? Fine, I guess we're doing this the old-fashioned way. I guess we're just exploring the world and such. Ooh, blooming. Death read, is it? Okay, very good. I might actually spend a little bit of time trying to pick up some of those bad boys. For any of you guys who don't know, of course, Deathweed blooms during a full moon and a blood moon. So 
So, yeah, we've got a full moon going on right now. Oh, that's some good parkour right there. And, oh, master dodging skills with a Z. Ah, oh, jeez. Okay. Oh, give me. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm so good at dodging. What can I say? Oh, right. Now I've got the slightly tall task. Oh, no. I'm trying to get out of here. I think I've just buggered myself up here, folks. Ah, fine. Back to base. I guess I'm starting my journey again. So, for some reason unknown to man, the zoologist decided she didn't want this house. And I know exactly why. For some reason, this door was popped off. Oh, no. <laughs> It must have been the goblin army earlier on, and I didn't notice it, huh? Ah, oh, dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, the good news is, this should be good once again, my friend. So, let's see if this works. It should do now. So, there we are, back to base and back to the ocean. Oh, dear lord. That was a headache. <laughs> Traversing a large world takes long enough as it is. Oh, well, doesn't matter. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back here. Let's zoom back in because I feel like it's easier to build when you're zoomed in. And yeah, we're going to get this thing done. We're going to add a little bit of a roof to this thing. There we are. Nice, tall roof to this thing. This is the large attic room, which is going to contain our water critter cage display area of epicness, I guess. And uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think we've done too bad here. We just need to get ourselves some other little building bits and bobs. For example, I'm thinking living wood walls. Oh, no, they don't work too well. It's the sawmill where you make those beams, right? Yep, there they are. Wooden beams. Just going to make ourselves a bunch of those. Then we should be able to get ourselves back over to the ocean. Lovely, we still can. And now we should be able to get this thing done and dusted. All right, now we're starting to make some serious progress, folks. We've almost got this thing done and dusted. Just want to get on with adding just a few little windows in. I've got some down at the bottom already. I just want to get a couple in the top here. This top area is very, very dark, though. Do we want to try and do something about that? I'd say so. And there we go. Little chandelier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. For now, I'd say this is looking pretty good. We've got a little bit of a balcony type area of epicness. Not entirely sure if I'm still a big fan of these wooden beams. I feel like we could do a better job. But I don't know how just yet. There we are. To really finish off the place, I think some nice lampposts. So, oh. The platforms are in the way. That is unfortunate, actually. Because I would have actually really liked to have these things here. Right. I'm not sure that I'm a big fan of these beams. So, let's go for a less is more approach here. There we are, my friends. A less is more approach. I think that's actually worked out pretty well here. Yeah, that's not a bad looking little base, is it, folks? So to finish off this day, we can do ourselves another fishing quest. Underground and caverns. Unfortunately, we don't have easy access to caverns just yet. Aside from maybe this mushroom biome here. Are we going to be able to get down there and do the fishing quest before we run out of time, though? All right. Well, my inventory is organized. Let's get ourselves down to the underground. I just realized something. While we're down here, we can try our hand at finding ourselves the Goblin Tinker Boy. Ah, killing multiple birds with one stone without even realizing it. Ah, here we are, my friends. A very large pond. Not just that. There's actually a life crystal here as well. So, yeah, don't mind if I do the terraria. Anything in the lake itself? There's actually a chest in there, so that's kind of nice. Time for some treasure. A breathing reed. Wow. All right, let's go grab all these mushrooms and let's get this fishing quest underway, shall we? So we're just going to latch ourselves up to the top there. And we're going to see what we can get. I'm hoping this will still count as a cavern layer for fishing. 
I must admit, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm very conscious of the time limit that we have going on, my friend. So I think what we may need to do is just sort of bomb our way down further down into the caves. All right, very good. We've got ourselves the beginnings of a lake here. It appears there's more lake underneath, though, where that altar is. So I'm thinking we might be able to combine the two water sources together. Ah! Goblin takeaway! No! <laughs> Oh, jeez. You son of a gun. I cannot believe your behavior there, buddy. You know what I'd really like right now? A bone pickaxe. What's the chances of us actually getting one from this guy, though? 210 health. Wow, you actually are a worthy adversary for once. Oh, never mind. He gave me nothing. Ah, oh, jeez, I'm faffing around too much. Come on, Python. Get back to your quest, buddy. Right, boom. And boom. Fish. Come on, make millions of fish come to my little bobber. Do it, armored cavefish. Nope, not what we're looking for. Hey, and there we have it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we can now get this thing handed in just before the next quest begins. Oh, no way. We've got ourselves a fishing-related accessory already. Hey! So that's five out of 12 informational accessories we need for the eventual massive shell phone item that I'd quite like to go for in this series, only I once did a YouTube short on that bad boy, and I called it the best item in Terraria. Because still, even today, I think it still is the best item in Terraria. I mean, how can you not love the shell phone in this game? So then, do we want to open up these crates as we go along? Yes, let's see what we get. Oh, wow, five tungsten bars. Was that worth it? Not really. <laughs> but check it out, folks. We've got specular fish. That's a potion ingredient, as are the armored cave fish. And as a result, check it out. We can now make ourselves endurance potions, which is pretty awesome. And then we can make ourselves some cooked fish with the bass that we've been catching. Yeah, we're not doing too bad, are we, folks? In terms of little buffs here and there, I think we're doing pretty darn well. All right, it is now morning, so let's wrap up the episode with another fishing quest. you got to be kidding. It's the same exact one. Ah, bound goblin. I done found him. Right, uh, if I could just get myself over to him without him despawning. That would be very, very nice. All right. No, you do not take out my bound goblin. Go get out of here, Sonny Jimbo. There we have it. Right. Rocket boots and the Tinker's Workshop. That's all we really need. He should automatically wind up back at a house at some point. But for now, I want to keep on with my fishing quest. I want to get my third one done for today's episode. And then we could probably wrap up by combining some accessories. Wow, the first one. You love to see it. I certainly love to see it at any rate. So here we are. What have we got? We've got a fish hook. Is that better than the slime hook? Uh, I mean, I think so. Uh, it shoots twice. Ah, interesting. The question is, does it reach further than the slime hook? Let's give it a bit of a go. So if we start from this tree, for example, uh, it reaches what? Just further than the angler? And this one pretty much reaches the angler. Okay, so the fish hook is better. So then, temporarily, we're going to put the Tinker's Workshop right there. We're going to take off all of our accessories, and we're going to see what we can make. Uh, pretty much Spectre Boots, and that is it. Uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Why would we pass those up? We've got ourselves a little bit of flight now, everybody. Yeah. So then, my friends, to wrap up today's episode, we've got the comments of the day. RBW Cursor says, Hey, Python, don't forget about barrels. They're cheaper to craft than chests. Love the pace of the series. Keep it up. Hey, thank you so much for the kind words, buddy. Barrels. I don't know that that is something I've ever made before. So if we were to whip out some iron bars, uh, there's the barrel requires one iron bar and nine wood. Okay, so already it is indeed cheaper than a chest. A chest requires, I think, two metal bars. It requires slightly less wood, but double the amount of iron bars. So, let's give it a bit of a go, shall we? Let's maybe chuck it down right there. 
takes up, what, a two by two area, similar to a chest, which is pretty awesome. And then you go within it, and you've still got the same amount of inventory slots as if you had a chest. I never knew that. I have legitimately learned something new today. Thank you so much for turning my attention to that. That might just have to be something... I start adopting in some of my builds from hence here forth. Thank you so much for that, buddy. I appreciate it. And I appreciate all of you folks for watching today's episode. If you have enjoyed today's episode, of course, you're excited to see more. Do be sure to head down beneath the video. Spend a second to drop a like if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future content. But for now, my friends, thank you so much for watching. Of course, let me know what you think of today's build in the comments area down below. Maybe there's something I could have done different. Maybe there's some other reasons. Sources I could have used. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I do my best to read and respond to as many comments as I humanly can. But yeah, for now, thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for all of your support throughout the series once again. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye bye.